Hello, I'm Richard Vobes and I'm out on another exciting walk. This time I'm going to look at a particularly old church and a church with something rather unusual. This, according to the signage here, is um, St Botolph's at Hardham and it contains some of the oldest wall paintings in the country. And to help me decipher what they are, I'm back with my friend Martin Snow. Hello, Martin. Hello again. Uh, we're on another adventure this time. We've hopefully we'll find what we're looking for. I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go and have a look at uh, Hardham Church. We should tell everybody where we are again. We are down in West Sussex and we're at a place, a little tiny little village called Hardham, um, which is more of a hamlet really, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's very few houses. Um, and we're standing, and we've come to look at this church. Let's see if I can get a better view. Hang on, it's going to go up here and grab the view for the lovely, the lovely viewer. There it is. Um, it's a particularly interesting church because unlike some of the churches that I've looked at recently, this church has got a lot of rendering on the outside. Perhaps you could um, just explain why it has that, because so many churches you see have the, um, the masonry exposed. Yes, well originally um, the stonework would have been just rough rubble, um, not dressed stone like we see when it's all nice and neat. Right. Um, and then it was would have been plastered, uh, a lime plaster, uh, to protect it from the weather and uh, to make it look pretty. As you can see, where they've restored it here, it's a nice bright white. And of course, um, most of our churches would have been like that right so it's only later on that they used very fancy stone and paid so, the stonemason so i mean in a way this is a sort of humble church isn't it oh, it's, very, a, it's very a very much, yes. humble and small church let's have a little stroll around then and and i think that's worth just repeating what you just said then that many churches back in the day would have had some sort of finish that when we look at churches now these rural churches buried in the countryside that don't and we think oh that's how they used to look but actually that's wrong they look would have looked more like this more like this yes that's right and um, so that i mean that's a fascinating feature yes yes i mean that when they I, th I think it makes it look very them look very attractive i did mention to you before we started recording i'm just going to go over here so people can get a, a b better aspect of the church that, that they looked a bit chocolate boxy um, uh, Martin, because of the, the the rendered finish and the the style of the of the church. I mean, it is a an incredibly m magnificent looking church. Um, and as as I said before, it's a humble. So it's got and this church really has a nave and a chancel. That's right. Um, and a smart, a tiny little bell. What do you call it? A bell coot. Bell Co coot. Coat. Cot. C O T. Bell cot on on the roof. Um, let's go and, and investigate a little bit further because there's one thing I noticed, and I'm going to have to walk backwards to get to it. There looks like a walled up um, doorway. Can you give me any light on that? Um, yes. Uh, as I'm part as part of the um, the ritual of the church. Um, the processions and that they would be through through the church in one door and out the other right um, but that changed and obviously here the bricking up was quite early because when we look inside we won't see um, we won't see the other won't, side the won't see won't see the inside so this is this is the south um, door south, isn't it and, door. and mostly you enter churches these days from the south don't you Generally speaking, Generally. yes. I mean, I mean some had a western door in the west, tower. West, yes, I mean, west doors were, for a time, the preferred, again, for processional reasons and litur liturgical reasons. Right. And the, you know, the order for the order of the service and that. Right. So, I mean, it's all about service and it's all about that order. Shall we, shall we wander a bit further? Yes, certainly. Let's come round here. Um, it's beautifully looked after and, and beautifully kept. And one point that I made early on, um, I think, is we're going to go inside shortly and have a look at these wonderful fres frescoes. Are they frescoes? Uh, Paintings? Fre fre yes, on, onto plaster. Onto the plaster. Oh, uh, when it's wet. Right. Um, and so therefore, one imagines that 
they have a, a grant to keep this place looking as pristine as possible because it is of such national importance. Yes, I'm unsure what the funding is, but it is because the paintings are very famous. Yeah. Um, obviously, they don't. That they get national 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 funding. recognition as well. So let's um, let's without further ado, then let's go inside and see what we can see. Uh, I'll let you do the honours with the door. Right. So I hope you can see um, what we can see. I mean, the first thing that strikes you is, um, well, certainly to me, and I don't know how good it is on the, on the camera, is just how much wall paintings there are in this beautiful, humble, little rural church. I mean, I'm guessing it's not going to be terribly um, obvious to the viewer. Um, but how early are they then, uh, Martin? Um, well, they believe that they were painted around 1100. The wow. church, church itself is thought to have been built about 1050 right. before the conquest. So, so it's definitely Saxon, Saxon church. Um, and then the paintings are, th are thought to be about 1100. Goodness. Um, and that's, I mean, that's quite unusual then, is it? Uh, it was, it's early. It, it's early. And, yes. But we've only been able to see them quite recently. Yes, um, it was only in the 1860s that, um, that they were rediscovered. Uh, they were cleaning, cleaning off the, uh, the whitewash that went on in the Reformation because such hideous things were hidden uh, hidden, call, call, uh, yes. According to, yeah. Once we turned to the Church of England and we'd yeah, lost the sort yeah, of Catholic Church. Protestants church. and that. Yeah. It was thought, uh, um, um, and they were, there was conservation work done there then, but unfortunately they didn't have uh, quite the technology we have today. So unfortunately they've uh, deteri deteriorated um, to what they were. And they would have been a lot brighter, wouldn't they? I mean, originally, well, originally, they were originally. Been very bright. I mean, do you think they they would have been um, quite garish? Um, I mean, I, th I suppose what I mean is, they look, they look, they very, look very subdued. Now. They look subdued now, but they look right because they sort of held, they hold some sort of reverence by the fact that they're they're subtle. But um, let's go into the chancel. But actually. In their day, they, you know, they wouldn't have been subtle, would they? No. Oh, no, they would, they would, they would have done them to, yeah, in, in praise of God to the, the best of their ability and, the bright, and brightness. Um, and I imagine which, like at Coombs, they're there to tell the story. They're, to, they're the, there to tell the story because people weren't, were pretty much illiterate. Yes. Uh, so they could be used as a, as a visual aid in teaching um, and remembering... The, the important stories. We've popped outside again, uh, not through a grave. Uh, we popped outside again because there was an interesting feature, uh, Martin, that uh, you were keen to show me, which is quite unusual uh, in churches, but quite an important one on this one. Yes. Is that right? Well, it's, um, it's important in that there's some, some evidence of it. Right. Um, most of it's gone. Uh, there was a, as ever. As ever, yes. <laughs> um, there, wa there was a an anchorite cell. Um, okay. And um, and just just explain what an anchorite an, cell is. An anchorite was somebody who was walled up in a building, uh, it, attached to the church. Yes. Uh, with um, a view into the church, and a hole which they could be passed food by their supporters. Uh, they would spend their days in contemplation and prayer uh, for um, you know the, lo the local situation. Um, for, 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 for life? And for, from when they went in, yes. uh, for life and then... So, were... so this was somebody, a religious somebody, who was that devout that they would wall themselves up uh, yeah. and, and for the rest for the, of their life and just be fed by whoever would generously feed them. Generously feed them. That's right. I mean, that's, um, that's, that's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. In 1250, um, there was uh, a gentleman, Prior Richard, um, who was who was walled up. Um, 
when they when they did the um, the restoration and the replastering of the walls, they let's did just, some excavation. Yeah, let's go down and have a have a look, see what we can find. So the foundations of the wall that was you know, we'd now be standing in there. Right. Uh, in the wall, you can see um, what is thought to be a squint that would enable the a squint a squint, which is a hole. Right. <laughs> uh, through which the anchorite could squint at the. At the or church. see, uh, or see the the uh, the, the, service, the service, service being on. taken on, uh, being going on, right? Um, and particularly when the host was, the, you know, the the, the, bread, the, the bread, bread and the, the wine, wine were were raised, uh, he would be able to see that and then take part in in the communion service. So someone would pass him the host of the bread, and he, and he could have a bit of a yes. munch at the, at the yeah. appropriate time. Um, and so this is the squint in here. Yes. In there. Yes, so obviously the, it's filled. Yeah, it's, it's all filled it's, in. Yeah, you can see it goes right the way through the wall. Yeah, and uh, at an angle. In the, and if if you if that hole was open, you'd be able to see the altar. Yes. Oh, amazing. Or so how table. big do you, how big is this walled room? Um, it's. You it mean you've got to be big enough to sleep in, presumably? Yeah. It will probably be about eight or ten foot square. Right. So. Oh, okay. So it's like a cell. It's you like know. a cell, yes. I mean, and if, it, as you say, it was prior Richard, and, and, and actually, if I just come over here, you can't really see it from here, but somewhere over here is the remains of the Hardham Priory, which is in private property, and you can't see it now, but um, it, it is somewhere over here. And he may have, he may have come from he, there. He, he may, and, the fact that he's prior, he, he may have come from there, or he may have come from somewhere else. Somewhere else, who and he knows. Had, you know, he'd done his service as, as a prior yes. and felt that it was time to spe spend even more time in prayer and contemplation. Well, I need to spend time in prayer and contemplation. Um, thank you so much, Martin, for another illustrious trip around. This time we've managed to find something, this wonderful and gorgeous chocolate box, box church and take away this fact that churches of that time in the Saxon and early Norman period, throughout that period, they would have looked something like this with that wonderful render or lime render that they would have had. So I bet that's something you didn't know. It's certainly something I didn't know. So there we go. Martin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, you are going to give me a lift back this time, aren't you? I will do. Do you know where you parked the car? Oh, no, that's an interesting question. We'll have to go looking, <laughs> won't we? Let's hope the um, anchorite hasn't walled it up somewhere. That's right. Don't forget to subscribe, press the notification, and give us a thumbs up, make your comments, all the usual, and I'll see you on the next one. Where's my chocolates? Uh, your chocolates, uh, they're in the box.